that's the one thing I've heard from your speech here, just kind of thinking about uh, being up here today, just having the opportunity to be a part of the game and growing up. And I, I am a product of just like all of you. And the funny story about me is the reason why I got involved in tennis. My parents wanted me to play, and uh, I always lost in the first round. And I had brothers that played that were more successful, so they were playing in the tournament, so I always had to hang around the tournaments. So I got involved with the tournaments, kind of riding them and volunteering, and that's how I started as a, as a junior getting involved and I love the sport and all the opportunities now get to work with kids and kind of passing on that same message about how great the sport is and how good these kids can be and uh, through our sport. So it's, it's a great opportunity. You know, that's a big thing. What have been some of the challenges that you face in not only getting the kids involved but keeping them involved? Just again providing the providing the opportunities for them and getting out there and connecting with more people because all of you are out here I think it's all of us just networking and talking and finding similar people that want to have the same mission and get them out there and we can connect the dots and connect the people and get everybody out there. I think uh, that, it's, it's taken three years. We started the high school uh, world team tennis. Uh, we tried five years ago uh, with five teams. It got rained out. Uh, we tried two years again after that with six teams. And since then, it's grown. We're up to we're gonna hopefully get 32 teams this year. So uh, it's great for high school. And how do you use those competitions with the teams to really the, the kids to want to go further. And high school is awesome because, you know, in teenage years, this is where boys and girls find themselves and each other, building relationships. <laughs> so the social aspect of high school and, and the world team tennis is, is great because not only do they get to play their individual sport of tennis, but they get to do it in a social environment. And with high school world team, it's, it's more social. And boys get to play in the same court as girls and vice versa, and they get to play it. It's all the same on that court, and no matter what. So it's 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 a good teaching tool for our for our teenagers to learn how to coexist on the court, and uh, it's great socially too. I mean that's the one thing you know, we're just getting done with girls' season, and I'm kind of taking a deep breath saying, okay, I'm done. But then the girls are like, well, when are we going to start our coed season? Because we want the guys to come on the court. So it's it's great to see that continuity, and we want them to be eager. And the guys are knocking on my office door, like, coach, when are we starting? So we want them to make bubbles. That's the big thing I hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what kind of partnerships have you created with the other high schools in your in your city and in your state? The key thing getting us started was support from CIF, our local governing body for high school sports. I think once you CIF stands for California Interscholastic Federation. So they, they govern all high school sports out here in California. I think making that connection was key. If you have their support, if you have your governing body support for high school. And they back you because you want to grow your sport and they want more participation for high school athletes. That's a great relationship to have because they will help foster things for you and give you the support you need, the connections to other coaches and schools to uh, to get your programs going. Have you found it challenging at all for support of the parents and your initiatives? No, they love it. They love it. They, the kids come back and talk about how good of a time they had. And it's a perfect time where it matches with the world team format. It's not too long. Uh, they get to go out and play, and you know they're out of the house all weekend too, so they get to go out there and, and have some fun. So what kind of relationship do you have with Billie Jean King and World Team Tennis? She is in more that. She has been great, and uh, working now it's great that we have World Team Professionally back here in San Diego as well. We got to work with her last year, and she got to talk to the kids uh, that were playing World Team and just say how important it is that they're doing this and how how a great opportunity is for them to play the sport and learn a lot of life lessons through it. I think it's a great time for us in San Diego to have that with the aviators and the high school level too to kind of see where they can go in. So when you look out in Rome and you want to give the advice to many coaches, many of the people here who may be high school coaches, what would you tell them to go back into their communities to start this one? The biggest thing again is networking as well, like what we're all doing here. Uh, talk to other coaches that, are, that have the same passion, that have the same ideas. If you get together, that was, like I said, it started with five coaches for me uh, and, and support of the Barnes Center and trying to say, we can host you here, we can get you started. I think finding a group of people to start it, and then it'll grow because again, teenagers like to be together and want to do it on the tennis court and have them play together and, and have fun that way too. So it's a good opportunity. Do you have many players that have actually graduated from high school and have gone on to play tennis on campus and come back and brag about it? Yes, I've, had, I've been fortunate. Nice plug. I've been fortunate to uh, have two students. Two of my boys actually started programs for tennis on campus at their schools. And uh, uh, one of them 
and she became their kind of the manager, had to organize all the funds, get the groups all together. And funny thing about him, you would never have thought in high school he'd be somebody to organize a whole group. He was kind of the quiet guy, and just liked to play, but didn't really talk to anybody. But then he comes back and tells me he's starting the tennis on campus group. He's the business manager, gets the whole fun travel, they can travel and do different things. So it's, it's great to see them blossom in those roles and again, using tennis as a, as a vehicle to do that. So I know that you have youth that have gone on to do that. When you're constructing your teams here in high school, are you appointing or nominating players to be the leaders of that team to start to get that experience? I try not to point out anyone in particular. I kind of give them, like, for this year, my seniors, I give them opportunities for leadership and say, you know, let's do a team activity here or like practices, I'll give different, uh, give different seniors, different juniors, different captains opportunities to lead different drills and just kind of see and test who can really lead, who can take control of things, who can you know, have, have fun with it. And kind of, and it. It's good to push them as teenagers to kind of see, look, you can do this. Because as teenagers, you know, you're kind of still shy. And we as coaches and as adults kind of want to nudge them a little bit, kind of push them towards that cliff a little bit and see if they do it. Now you're in a unique situation here in San Diego where the weather is perfect year round. <laughs> That can be challenging for those of us back on the East Coast from Midwest and Northern states where you have to go indoors. So how do you motivate or how do, or how do you suggest uh, that these coaches to go back and try to utilize this year round when they have to go indoors and try to find courts? Time and courts, if you're limited, look for play days. You may not be able to do a whole season like we have that opportunity to do here, but Maybe do festivals or open play days where, you know, with the world team format, it's great. One thing that coaches love about the world team format is only two hours, as opposed to high school matches here can last three or four hours. So with that limited time in the short format where you can have up to a dozen people play at one time, it, it's great to engage them and have that fun. And they and you kind of tease them a little bit. It's like, you know, you get this girl, it's like, oh, I want to come back and do this again. So I think, you know, if you're, you're limited on that, just make do with that. And, Put them all together for that short time and just kind of get them to enjoy a little bit, get them hooked, and then they'll kind of still want to organize them on their own and kind of go from there. How competitive are the youth that you're working with? Though? Because we talk about our junior competition level, kids playing global tournament section, the national. What is the percentage of your kids that they play national tournaments and then section and then the solo level? In high school, I would say it's about 10% that play the national level. But it's great to have them there, but that's kind of the reason why we started the high school world team tennis too. Is we have 10% that play national, but what about the other 90%? You know, like we talked about in the video. Uh, it's nice to see in the last three years too that program. We've had a lot of new JV programs and novice programs in high school start up. So it's engaging that other 90% and keeping them hooked. That that's been fun and enjoyable to see because we see. I'm starting to see in my program a lot of new kids just popping up. I want to try it. Or I want to try it. It's great, especially when on the world team, it's just we're a club. So we don't cut, we just want to give everybody an opportunity to play. Kind of open from there. And so when you look at these these players, I mean, how many of them are multi-sport players? I would say right now, for me, that's where I work, about 30%. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot of softball, you know, girls that play softball. Uh, boys, I'm starting to see some football players. Kind of interesting because we fall in the winter, so they're playing football in the fall, and they come over in the winter and play and uh, play some tennis as well. So it's nice to give them a, a, that opportunity, especially at the high school level. Uh, one thing I hear from a lot of parents too is tennis is a great sport because it's non-contact. Uh, it's a sport they can play as long as they you know, would like to, and it's, it's another opportunity for them to do something different. And you know, the social aspect that's why I think it's becoming more popular for us is that co-ed experience at the high school level too, so being able to connect there. And what kind of collateral are you using to promote it? Uh, fortunately for me, I get to cross promote because I'm, I work with our CIF as far as our high school. So I, right now we're riding the girls season, we're finishing up with our individual championships, so I can, I'm lucky enough to get to network with coaches and pass that along. Uh, the Aviators, our, world team, our professional world team, uh, has been supportive as well, so kind of different vehicles and being able to network that way to get the word out to different uh, you know, programs out there and different coaches that we are doing this. And uh, Millie Jean and her staff out there have been very supportive as well. I think we're one of the few, if not the only, uh, high school world team program right now. 
Have you reached out to other, other uh, major cities here in California? And I know two come to mind, obviously Sacramento and LA, who have had world team tennis, professional world team tennis teams before. Have you reached out to any of the contacts in those areas to try to duplicate what you're doing here? Not yet, but there hasn't been talk about doing that. And one of the cool things we had last year is one of our teams from the South, so in the South Bay, actually took the format and went and traveled up to San Francisco and played a couple high schools up there for a winter break and loved the format up there. And a couple coaches up there, I know they've contacted to have them come up again and show other schools the format too. So even just the local networking there, we didn't have any you know, organization <coughs> saying do this, we just had local teams make a connection to have a team travel to somewhere and play another great format up there. So we, we would love to start, start spreading this around. Do you have a goal in mind as to how many participants you'd like to have or, or see it max out or? Don't want to max out. She's not max out at all. <laughs> Keep your own. Um, is there anything that you want to relay to the audience before we open up to them for some questions? Um, really, just again, you, you, this is the perfect stage right here for all of you guys to talk and, and, and really connect. Uh, I think that's my one opportunity I had was to be able to do that as a high school coach and just continue. Because I mean, one thing my passion is just seeing the kids. As you all know, coaches, you may not see an immediate reward. It's the reward when they come back and tell you, you know, it's the best high school experience, you know, being on the team and learning this or, or going through this. That's that's the reward for me. That, that's what kind of drives me to make sure what the high schoolers now can keep doing that and have that experience too and keep moving on and keep playing. Because you know, it's, it's fun to see them keep playing and, and go out there. and may not play professionally, not play, not play varsity college, but still go out and play and start spreading to their when they start having families and things like that too. So just knowing that they're going to game as well, like planning that seems the best thing. Wonderful. Are there any questions in the audience? Yes. Uh, so I'm from NorCal, so we also have a relationship with CIS. Give me one second, we have a mic coming to you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm a Devon. No. 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 You speak up. It is now. No. <laughs> uh, so I'm a CSR in North Cal, so we also work with CIF. Uh, and one of the things I run into is coaches being scared to do off-season uh, stuff, even if I can assure them that the CIF is okay with it, because if, you know, they think like Big Brother's going to come down on them and take away their position as high school coach, or <laughs> suspend the team, or you know, something awful. So I, I was curious to see how you, you know, you, you were actually having CIF work for you, you know, to your benefit. Um, I'm curious how you how you got that relationship. Yeah, Rule 600, that's the one that everybody's afraid about when you're a high school coach. Uh, again, that's it, for CIF. I approached them five years ago and told them what the idea was and starting up as a club. Uh, if you approach it that way, uh, telling them it's not a varsity sport, you're not trying to start another varsity sport because one thing that they're trying to do in the CIF level is kind of curb the amount of hours that athletes are out on the field or out on the court, things of that sort. So that's a, that's a big concern right now with CIF. Uh, but I think presenting it as more just an opportunity for students to play. And we told them also, it's not a focus on the elite tennis player. It's more again the JV and novice level. So we're not going to continue on to a championship or any type of serious competition. So that is one of the stipulations for our season is that there is no final trophy. There is no championship. It's a club sport. We end our season on a festival where every team plays four matches in a day and there's no declared winner. We just play four matches and, and that's it for the day we walk away. Uh, so there, there are guidelines you do have to follow for CIF and that's one thing I'm fortunate is to meet with our commissioner, present them the idea and then understand where they're coming from and kind of see where you can compromise and meet the middle and what, what fits for your, for your program. Yes. Uh, are you, I don't, I got a big mouth. <laughs> are you, is there a pipeline, or are you involved with, like in your uh, maybe middle school and elementary schools or in school PE programs and after school programs so you have a pipeline of kids continuing to funnel into your high school program? Funny you asked that. In San Diego, that was kind of the reason why, another reason why we started this. We had, you know, we have our beginners and we have the 10 and others. You know, we have Karen Ryan Rager, we started that program, we're working with that program as well. We have our after school tennis, which hits the elementary and junior high. But then we had that void for so long in the high school where everybody kind of split off and did their own thing. And then tennis on campus and uh, college tennis. So for a long time, high school was kind of a void. 
uh, where we had. So we do have a pipeline, but here in San Diego, we saw the immediate need when we get the after school tennis to the Barn Center. Where did they go from there? Some went to high school tennis, but then others that weren't as good, that were still kind of raw to the game, didn't like the competition when you got to high school tennis. So that's why we're hoping to cre create the high school world team tennis where it's more of a, a club feel, where it's more social, that you can come out and compete without worrying about competition or CIF trophies or anything like that, why we created that. So I mean, that's why it worked here, and I think it finally caught on. And, and we, we had that need, I think. I'm talking to Glenn and a couple other people too, there, there has been kind of that void for high schools, kind of where they all split off and go to soccer, football, basketball, baseball. You know, we need to hook them, or keep them hooked, because they're hooked at that age. But again, keep them engaged in the high school years. Any other questions? I saw a few hands earlier. I know you have questions. Come on, don't be shy. Thank you. Here we go. You'll be next. Hi. What are the stumbling blocks for the kids in our underserved area in Tucson is joining the USDA? So I would like to know, is that something being discussed? How do you get kids, how, how do you allow them to pay for it? You can't afford it, basically. Our programs are free. We have our 10 under free membership, so it's not, right. it should This is for children yeah. over 10 that want to participate in supersets and tournaments like that. They just can't afford to join the USTA. So I was wondering if there's any discussion about having um, scholarships for those children. We have, a, we actually have some, a few new models that will be coming out for a membership that's different than what we have right now. So it'll be additional uh, ways for people to join and for kids in particular, because that is a concern for all of us and understanding that there's a need for these youth to be able to participate in USDA sanctioned uh, programs. But our, all of our programs, when we talk about NJTLs, et cetera, obviously there's no membership fee. And within those programs, they are all able to have play days. So you don't need a membership to go and play in a play day or in a kids club. That is that, that, that the membership is not required for that. Is there a question over here? Hello. Yeah. Okay, it works. Um, my question is twofold. Uh, one being that I'm a high school tennis coach as well, and I would love to engage other uh, high schools to to play more, and also to extend to the JV who don't get many opportunities to play. I'm of course coming from the East Coast where um, courts are scattered and uh, not plentiful. Uh, so my question is, one, why, why, why uh, world team tennis as opposed to junior team tennis? And secondly, are you charging for your program? As far as for world team, that idea came from locally here from one of my mentors, Kathy Ouellette, who has worked with Delaney Matt and Billie Jean King back at world team. So they approached me about that format. And the one thing, as a high school coach for our format here, high school tennis versus world team, the one thing I like is that it's a two hour match. And we all know time, especially on weekends, is, is very short for a lot of these teenagers. And uh, with a two hour match time, and with only two courts, it's perfect, two courts, and for our facility, we have six courts. That means we can host six different teams at one time and get more teams at one site for two hours. And a lot of times when we first started, the really cool thing was six teams would get together and play in the morning for two hours. A lot of them loved the format. It's like, you know, let's take a break, let's all switch around, play two more hours, and then we're done for the day. Uh, as far as charging, you know, we try to keep everything. A lot of our coaches that started did this as volunteers to continue their programs. Uh, as far as charging, a lot of schools here cannot charge for sports. So a lot of it is, you know, free and, and through their schools. Uh, second, and a lot of questions I get administratively are about insurance. Uh, ADU is a big one that our, a lot of our coaches use if, if it's not covered through the school. Uh, our school does cover it because it is a school club, so there, it is a student participation or a school sponsored uh, club. So all of their coverage is under the school right there. Uh, so I know, and with schools, as far as balls, it costs you two cans of balls and your time. Uh, that's how I present it to coaches and just kind of. You want to get your players out there. That's the great thing. You continue the season on to get to play more. 
So we try to keep it as low cost, a portion for our festival. Wilson did sponsors for a couple cases of balls, so we got for the festival there, and then the world team put up t-shirts and things like that for us as well. So we found some underwriters for a couple of festivals for the last few years. And I would say that it's a great opportunity. This is in addition to the other programs that we have, such as junior team tennis, which is also kind of a world team tennis format with uh, having a co-ed team. So if you still have the junior team tennis uh, programs in your area, we still urge you to uh, have those kids participate. But again, a lot of the junior team tennis are not high school age, so it's, a, it's an opportunity for the younger kids to be involved in JTT before they get to the WTT format. Any more questions for me, for Ron? No? Come on, give me two more questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was just curious with the different format for World Team Tennis, um, for Ron, for the high school students, do you have some kind of uh, pre training of the rules and the different? Um, you know, scoring system that applies because I think many of them have never played World Team Tennis before. I, I usually hold, uh, we start, our, our season starts first week of December. Uh, usually what I do is a week before is hold a couple of practices. And all we do for practice is play matches to get them used to the format. It's it's all fun because even for our first match, what we did our first inaugural years, we had a festival at the beginning of the year to kind of go over the rules and have everybody play the format. And it's, it's learn as you go. I mean, it's no bad. Uh, the changeovers every four games, uh, playing the less, that was a big one. Uh, but it, it's, it's a learning experience for everybody, but it took us one day of play for all the teams to get it. And it's, it's funny the transition you see, especially because it's in between boys and girls. I have a lot of boys, you know, they're guilty of doing this. They don't, you know, they play less when they start the boys' season because they're still remembering back to our high school world team season. So there's, you see a transition a little bit, but it, it, it's pretty quick from our experience the last three years. Just teams will have a practice or we'll do a practice match with another team just so they can get understand the format. Uh, I mean, you know, we all have our little cheat sheets of how we're supposed to, you know, what we're supposed to look for and the scoring and everything. Um, I mean, that's, that's gonna be more your job as a coach, just understanding the rules. You're, the kids that are gonna play and understand. And the funny thing is trying to teach somebody who's new to the game, the world team, it, it's fun to see because they just, it, it clicks with them for some reason. And I think it's because they're with their peers and you know, they, they seem to be more adaptive to learn and more adaptive and learn more and learn quicker as they go along. So it's, I think it's just the atmosphere. We worry about the rules because it's so ingrained in us of being traditional tennis players. But I think with the high school level, they will do whatever. Um, just being out there and having fun. Yes. So, um, I just wanted to say, I'm, I'm at the GSI for San Diego, so I work closely with Ron, but I just wanted to say that the reason this has taken off is because of his amazing ability to organize so many details. He just finished his CAF draw last night at like 2 in the morning. Um, he's an incredible organizer, and I think that's what it takes for this type of thing to go off, is somebody like Ron, who's amazing with working with people and he's just an easygoing, wonderful guy. And then having a lot of other coaches be willing to step up and give up some Saturdays to have their teams come out there. But really, I mean, oh, kudos to you. It started with you, so thank you. Some schools, unfortunately, because of their space or whatever limitations, have to cut. Uh, the world team for a lot, for us for the last few years has been non-cut. So we've had a lot of a lot of girls and guys that don't make their traditional high school tennis team come over and play high school world team because it is their opportunity. So I think it's it's skewed a little bit. But I know for me as a high school coach in my program, I do get a lot. I think this year, last year was probably about thirty percent. This year, I think it's going to be about fifty, uh, just from. Uh, from the initial interest I've got for this year's for this year's season, so uh, and the, the another purpose of this as well is we don't again we don't focus on a top level player. We encourage JV novice 
and non-starters of the varsity level to really play this and kind of hold their game saying they're ready for the upcoming boys season or continue on from the girls season. So it's it's not as serious. We don't want to scare them away saying, oh, you know, these top level players are going to be in it and, you know, and play that. But it's it's funny because you see that and then you want to you hear about <coughs> top level players wanting to join it because of the social aspect, because of the fun part of it. So I think kind of teasing them a little bit. And we've had a couple matches in the last two years I've set up just on the side of some top high school players in different programs to, to play the format. And those have been some incredible matches. It's fun, good tennis, but at a high level. And I think trying to get, to, if, you, if you're from here from San Diego, you know, Tory Pines, you know, they've won 20, they just won a 26 straight CIF title. And a lot of times, you know, when they hear Tory Pines, a lot of people run because they're, they're good. Uh, but then I know their coach this year was interested in being a part of it because he's saying his kids want to be a part of this and they have fun with it too. So it's nice to hear, you know, from different levels that you want to be, they want to be included in this program. So, but again, our focus is more than novice and the JV because that's, you know, you have your tip of the iceberg, that's your top 10%, but if you want to worry about what's underneath that 9%, you want to get them up, up service and, and really play. That's kind of what we're about there. One last question. Somebody else has one. I already got one. There's one in the back somewhere. Is there another? Is there another hand? Yep. Yes. Back, back there. there. Yeah. I'll do the microphone. Um, just talking about novice players, not necessarily the top varsity players. It seems like an opportunity to go out to the football teams, the basketball teams, soccer players, bring those in as a cross trainer in the off season, and maybe tennis gets away from being the number seven, number eight to a two, three, or four. Is that something you thought about or look at? Definitely. Uh, the one trouble, one, one problem I have, because basketball is a great sport for tennis and, and vice versa, that's the same season as winter for us. So basketball and court tennis kind of have to coexist. Uh, but it, it is something when we do market that is, and just getting that information out there to the students on campus, talking to our athletes. And again, I'm in a unique position that I work in our athletic office where I can talk to all of our athletes and students and say, hey, if you're not available, and, and one draw I have is, again, high school students in a competitive atmosphere are looking for credits. <coughs> They're looking for participation and build up their transcript. So that's another lead that I kind of on, on campus also talk about. So getting kids to be a part of another program is like, hey, it's five more units for your transcript, but it's also a fun sport to play. So it, it also keeps you keeps you active. It's great cross training, especially for if it's you know, leading for boys lacrosse lead for track and field girls they would be coming out from from tennis to lead into a, a spring sport as well so definitely that, that is a market on your own campus where you can talk to students and you can take different angles whether it's a participation for transcript whether it's a social aspect of it or whether it's just again picking up a new sport and, and learning tennis so I mean, there, there's different angles on your campus whatever you, you think meets your need Sorry, one more question. Yes, where it comes from. Um, can you give a quick update on the USA University and um, the steps with the, you know, any tennis management degree and different schools? The PTM? Yeah, that's it. Okay, can you? Yeah, PTM, that's what she's referring to. She's referring to the PTM and the University of Utah. So with the, Fer the programs that we have at Ferris State and Ball State, you know, I think the important thing for this is a great audience for that. There's a few universities that are out there that are providing degrees for professional tennis management, which is that PTM. And it's not so much for being a great tennis player, but it's also it's getting to the business of tennis. And so we are partnering and have partnered with several universities around the country. Um, our latest is is it UCF Kurt Kurtigan? UCF, which is yep. the University of Central Florida, yep. which is where our USTA national campus will be down in the Orlando area. And it's really to provide the business aspect of our sport so that we can keep people involved and so that we can keep these players, these high school players, motivated to want to stay in the sport of tennis. Not everyone can be a national, uh, a professional tennis player, but you can definitely be in the sport of tennis on a business aspect no matter what that level of business is. So um, we are excited to continue to grow these opportunities across the country. And then we have Ferris State, Ball State, UCF. Um, Methodist. 
Methodist, they are Methodist, and there's one other one. So we have five, um, but it's growing. Is that the question? Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. And I see one other hand. Ron, I just wanted to applaud you as a fellow uh, high school coach, and uh, you know we're always faced with different challenges, and uh, sometimes the challenge is that we have a lot of kids and we don't want to cut them, and we have JV programs and different things and different regulations with uh, high school federations and local school systems, but uh, you know it looks like you know there's a will, there's a way, and you've done. It. I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. because I run a program in Harlem, uh, an NJTL program, and we deal with youth every day that aspire to maybe be on their high school team or beyond. And you're always gonna have those kids that are just gonna be recreation players, and they're not gonna be highly competitive. But it's an opportunity for them to know that they can compete and they can stay in the game outside of their high school seasons, even though they may not be able to play a sectional tournament or a national tournament. But if we can continue to keep these youth motivated to stay in our sport and then go on to play in tennis on campus or a club team, then we're doing our job as, as coaches and motivators and mentors and in introducing the sport of a lifetime. So for all of you that are in here that are working with these youth, make sure you keep them engaged in the sport. Let them know that they don't have to be a professional tennis player to be successful. They don't have to be a varsity tennis player to be successful. They can be successful in their own right by going out there and having fun and enjoying the sport and really collaborating and meeting friends and networking because this is a sport of a lifetime that all of you in this room know can take you to the highest heights in your own individual businesses, whether it's, it's in the tennis industry or not. So Ron, I want to applaud you again and thank you for really sharing a success story. You're one of many that are out there. I'm sure there's several more in this room, and we would love to hear about them. And, I, and please make sure you go to the session tomorrow with Glenn Arrington to talk more about what we're doing in high school. It's been a huge initiative in trying to collaborate. This year, I, I put together a high school task force, and it's really about getting the 50 state high school associations engaged in what we're doing to try to make sure that tennis can be accessible for all, but also year round, not just that six or eight week program um, for high school tennis. And we know we have a lot of youth that are playing multiple sports, so they're playing tennis this season, soccer the next, et cetera. But to know that they have an opportunity to stay engaged in programs that you all are putting together is a success story in itself. So thank you and please enjoy the rest of your, your weekend.